Hello. Let me just adjust myself a minute. So you can see me better. Hello, inspirational way here. Two sets. Oh, just got back. Get a. There we go. No, that's not it. Oh, God's sake. Two sets. Camera's very awkward to hold. This phone, should I say? Right, let's try now. Hello, inspirational way here. Um, this is gonna be my review of WWE's The Greatest Royal Rumble of All Time, which was pretty rubbish as a pay per view, I have to say. Um, so yeah, we're not gonna to waste too much time on this one. So yeah, there's a lot of matches, so we'll just quickly run through them and then go from there. But don't expect much from this because, uh, like I said, I didn't think much of the pay per view to be honest. Um, so yeah, let's start with the first match. John Cena first Triple H, which for about apart from two or three matches, I'm gonna say was most of the show okay matches. Gannis was okay match, Triple H playing the true heel, John Cena playing the face, obviously John Cena thanked them after the match. It was an okay match, nothing special, and didn't really know who the winner was gonna be, didn't really care who the winner was gonna be. You know, there's reasons why Triple H could have won it. There's reasons why John Cena could have won it. Because there's one, they're both on a big pay for you too. They've both, I believe, lost matches recently. Obviously, John Cena to Untake at WrestleMania. And Triple H to Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle. But apart from that, it's an okay Battles and Forwards match. On to the next match. And no really winner. The true winner of this. Because none of them get anything from it. Um, WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Cedric Alexander versus Kalisto. Again, a good, dec a decent match, which I would expect nothing less from the High Flyers, the Cruiserweight division. Um, obviously, you know, Alexander, Cedric Alexander's just won the belt, so it's obviously he's going to keep it, not going to lose it. And plus, this match I think was made like a week before the pay per view, a last minute match made. So it's obvious Alexander's going to win, but apart from that, it was an okay match. Nothing really special to say about it. Which is, like I said, the theme of quite a lot of these matches. Welcome back, Hardy for Bray Wyatt beat Cesar and Sheamus. Again, it's obvious because Cesar and Sheamus have been drafted to SmackDown, so they're obviously going to go after the SmackDown tag team belts now. So why the hell would they win the Raw? It wouldn't make sense. So, you know, apart from the winners, it's, a, again, again, an okay match. A little bit better than four, it's nothing special. Two sets, I've got to go and learn my past off. Sorry about this, folks. Do, 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 do. So, yeah, nothing special, as I was saying. On to the next match, which I uh, will say now. United States Champion first Jeff Hardy, uh, Jeff Hardy first Jinder Mahal. Again, it's very ob obvious Jeff was going to win because he's not going to, they're not going to let this intercontinental belt and the United States belt be on war. Obviously, Jinder's just been drafted to Raw. Jeff Hardy's just been drafted to SmackDown. So it's obvious they was gonna he was gonna win the match. And apart from that, again, it's an okay match. Nothing special. Apart from the botch where Jeff completely missed Whisper in the Wind and Jinder Mahal still fell to four over some nothing an invincible force. I'm guessing I don't know. But apart from that, it's an okay match. Nothing special. SmackDown Tag Team Champs: The Bludgeon Brothers versus the Usos again. Bludgeon Brothers won, not a surprise because they've only really just won the belt, so let's be honest, they're not going to lose them straight away. They've built them up to be this dominant force, and then they lost belts to the Usos, which wouldn't be a bad thing because I personally think Usos are one of the best tag teams going of this generation um, and in WWE. <coughs> you know, it wouldn't be a bad thing, but like I said, they've been built up to be absolute monsters, so they're not going to lose belts straight away. Didn't think much of the match, wasn't that interesting to me. I just don't think personally the Usos and Bludgeon Brothers have much chemistry in the mat in the ring. That's just my personal opinion. I don't think they have much chemistry which makes the match boring. On to one of the possibly two or three decent matches of the night. Intercontinental uh, I will say all these matches were very short, which is what made it rubbish, apart from the Royal Rumble, obviously. Um Intercontinental I mean, Seth Rollins first the Miz, Finn Balance Manjo. Again, it's a decent match. You know, I put it down to Finn and Seth because they are the main two who's been fighting for the belt. And they are the two that are on Raw. So obviously Simone Joe and Miz weren't going to win it because they're on SmackDown. 
But this was a decent good match. Probably one of the first and decent matches of tonight. So, you know, everyone had their moment. Um, very good ending where Seth... Spoilers. Oh, I forgot to say spoilers for this video. Um, very good ending to the match where Seth just jumped on from the ropes onto the ladder, you know. And I got the belt and done a sneaky win. But, you know, hey ho. I'm glad Seth won because he is one of my favourites. Second favourite, I think, of all time, along with AJ Styles. Um, and Finn is, as well. But, yeah. I didn't know who was going to win that. I just put it on Seth and Finn, and I'm glad Seth won, and it was a good match. Um, four prospects from Saudi Arabia ejected Sean and Ari Adar of the Fiery. Sorry if I'm butchering their name from the ring. It's a, a yeah, whatever segment. It was there, nothing really interesting about it. On to the next match. WWE Champion AJ Styles for Shutsane Nakamura. Again, sorry if I'm butchering his name. And their double count out. It was a decent match, very good match. Second good match of the night. Didn't expect anything less from AJ Styles and Shutsane Nakamura, to be honest. Um, I thought Shutsane Nakamura was going to win. Um, but it obviously ended in double count out, so I'm guessing they're going to continue this rivalry. Which does make sense, because if you think about it, who else is there to go for the belts? Daniel Bryan, if they push him and let him go for the belt. Big Cass, Mo and Joe. Randy, if they ever let him go for it again, because he's kind of doing nothing at the moment. There's a few that could go for it, but at the moment, obviously, you could tell all the focus is on AJ and to shit, say Nakamura. So, you know, apart from that, it was an okay match, a good match, and I'm glad they're carrying it on, to be honest, because I want it to carry on. Um, the Undertaker for a through Seth in a classic match, obvious Undertaker was going to win. Absolute rubbish of a match, I have to say, personally. Didn't enjoy it one bit, nothing to it. Just a quick bit of Rusev showing off, did his accolade. Undertaker, it's finisher one. Nothing to it, nothing amazing. Undertaker one, obvious. Rubbish match. Brock lent to first room in a steel cage match to retain and Brock won. Um, what can I say about this match? It was an okay match, nothing special, you know, it's a good decent match it's one of the three decent matches a four decent match matches obviously like i said intercontinental championship match was good the championship match between aj and St. nakamura was good this one was good and royal rumble was good um so yeah this was a good match you know just about a good match it was okay obviously roman reigns kept it in his superman spear a uh, superman spear superman punch and the spear and Rock kept hitting their five, which is really what both of them really do in matches now, is hit their finish all the time. But it was, you know, it was a good five, ten minute match. I wouldn't say nothing special. And I honestly thought Roman was going to win, not like I wanted them to. You should know my opinion on him. Um, but I thought he was going to win, to be honest. He didn't, so happy days. Um, but apparently it was a botch ending anyway, and Brock was meant to lose the belt, because Roman touched the floor first i don't know it's a just another way to extend the storyline in it let's be honest but um yeah and a good decent ish match now i correct myself what it said it was good matches they was decent matches the only good match was the ladder match and ad first checks in nakamura and the royal Rumble. those three were good brock versus room was okay decent and all the rest were just yeah whatever um, so, yeah, Brock won. Nothing else to it. Continues rivalry. See what happens. Braun Strowman won the first ever 50-man Royal Rumble, which I will talk about in a minute, because I've got just sort of passed out. Two seconds. Because my pass is going to burn otherwise. Yeah, so as I was saying, Braun, Braun Strowman won the 50-man Royal Rumble, the greatest Royal Rumble of all time, whatever you want to call it. I'm glad he won, because I am a big fan of him now. I think like most people, we, you know, wrestling fans, started, didn't like him, but he's grown lost now. I think, you know, he does need to be a face company, I agree with that. Uh, not Roman. And he just puts on matches, you know, he's had to entertain, he has a, you know, his character down to a T. 
He knows how to make people smile. He knows how to put on matches. So I'm glad you won it. Obviously, you had your special appearances with Hornswoggle and your moments with uh, the New Day as they do. And um, Rey Mysterio had his moments, obviously. You know, certain people had their moments. Obviously, Titus Worldwide slipped up and went right under the ring, which was quite funny. Um, overall, it was a decent, a good pay-per-view. Uh, not pay-per-view. A good Royal Rumble had its good entertainer moments. You know, Randy, Randy Orton had his moment at a couple of RKOs. You know, Daniel Bryan, fair play to him, lasted from number one all the way to the last two or three, I believe it was. For Big Cass and Nick them, so fair play, because I think his record was an hour and 15 minutes, something like that. So fair play to him, they at least let Daniel Bryan have a moment. Um, she had something else really to say. Good pay, good match, and grab with the winner. Did what? Didn't really know who was gonna win. It, to be honest, I will say, but you know, I'm glad Braun did. So overall, I am saying it was a okay pay per view. Nothing special, you know. Just about made it okay, with a few decentest matches. But again, like I said, nothing special. So that is it for this review. As I always say, comment if you disagree with anything. I will be back tomorrow for streaming session Burnout out Paradise and Thursday I will be dropping my review of Infinity War which all I can say for now is amazing so don't watch that if you don't want to be spoiled um, and then Friday a bit more streaming and then that's it until next week and just quick update on Batman books I have literally managed to get through to the company finally and I'm going to be trying to order a big bulk of the books when I get paid or when my wife gets paid if she lets me. Because um, I am about seven issues behind now, which is annoying. Don't get me wrong. But I am finding a way to do it. So I just got to wait until I get paid and I'm going to order a big bulk of them in a row. And then that would be a series that would be back on, back on my channel and continuing. Um, so apart from that, if I don't see you in the stream tomorrow, I will see you on Thursday's review of Infin Infinity War. Inspirational 8, out.